Okay guys, welcome back. Nano Reef Builder here uh, with my next piece of equipment that I am going to unbox and try out and show to you and see how we think it works. I'm trying to bring you along every step of the way, every piece of equipment uh, until we finally get this thing built. And if you're new to the channel, uh, this is your first video, this is not my tank, <laughs> okay? Uh, Actually, I was going to use this for do-it-yourself sump kit. Uh, I was going to have a different kind of setup when I first started going with a 6.6 .6 nano cube tank. Uh, since then, I have changed to an all-in-one aquarium that's getting delivered tomorrow. It's going to go uh, right back here uh, behind me. So now I'm just kind of, and this was $9.99, so I'm just kind of using it uh, today. I'll be using it for a demonstration. So <clears throat> this is... Uh, the heater that I got, okay? It is a QQA Quartz Aquarium Heater. I'm just gonna read these product features to you. Rapid thermal accumulation, LED digital temperature display, precise temperature control, auto power off and warning signal, memory function, which I wanted, high temperature resistant safety cover, and it's suitable for salt water. So this is the 100 watt version and it's rated I believe up to like a 25 uh, gallon tank. So it should be plenty and hopefully not too much for my 11 gallon tank. So let's, uh, let's open this up. So what I do here on this channel is I don't really do a lot of editing. Uh, I just try to be real and like I'm just like you at home. If you ordered this off Amazon, this is how it would come. And we just kind of go through the process together and see if we can figure it all out. So. Here we go, a little user manual, that is always good. This is what it looks like here uh, inside the packaging. Okay, so let's pull this out. So we have some sort of clips here. We have some uh, suction cups. We have the display and the heater, okay. All right then, so there's that. Let's start taking this apart. So this thing is a pretty, uh, it's a pretty good size. I mean, it's, it is definitely larger in size than I probably need. The back of my all-in-one uh, will have plenty of room for this, so I'm not really super concerned about that. Uh, probably could have gone with a smaller model, but sometimes I like to go up just a little bit. I like to look ahead to future builds or other tanks. And so I don't necessarily want to just buy everything super nano because that's what I'm doing right now. Um, even like with my lighting, I'll talk about that later, but I get a little bit more than what I probably need because I can always dim, bring down the intensity, but then I could transfer that light to a larger tank later if I needed. So that's what I did here. Probably could have got away with a 50 or 75 watt heater, uh, but I went with 100 and we'll see how that works. So. I'm gonna try this. Sometimes I like to just try it without even doing the user's manual, huh? Just see if we can figure it out. Sometimes you're just like, hey, I can figure that out. All right, so I'm just gonna get this thing going. So there is a third one of these. I think one of them's an extra because I just see these two uh, slots. So let's go ahead and put this in the tank. I'll suction cup it to the bottom just to make sure that it's low so you can see that does not require a lot of water i probably have i don't know maybe three inches in there and it's maybe going up halfway so it looks to me like inch and a half two inches of water would be plenty if you were going to lay it um this direction okay uh this probably oh yeah let's see if you can just figure this out man without even opening the directions clay you're crazy okay so I don't know exactly how this is going to work. Here we go. Oh man, look at you. Look at you go, Clay. Look at you go. So that's going to be so that I can hang this on the side of my tank. All right, I like something. I don't care how simple you think a heater is. Anything that doesn't require me to open the user's manual, I'm all for. Now, I could be screwing this up. Here we go, moment of truth. Let's hope it doesn't blow. Oh, okay. It did not blow. All right, so here's um, what, we've, what we're looking at. So what we here uh, have up top, which it says clearly, is the current water temperature. Um, assuming it might take a little bit of time to 
get that reading. It immediately read at 69 degrees, which sounds about right for the tap water that I pulled out. It does say that the temperature is currently set at 92, um, which is not what I want. So how do I set that? Let's see, oh, okay, just, I just started pushing buttons. So I pushed the button at the top and I held it and this started blinking right there. And then if I just kick it up, so let's just say I want the temperature to be, let's just say I want it to be 70, let's go 75, what the hell? Let's just set it at 75 for now. And then it stopped blinking so I know that it's set. I'm just, I'm saying I know all this but I haven't even got off the user's manual. Let's look at the user's manual in just a sec. So it says that it's heating. It says the current temp is 69 and it's set to 75. So um, let's, let's see how that works. Now let's, let's dive into this user's manual a little bit and see what we've got. Okay, let's see. Uh, the LED temperature display, the external, okay, right. All right, so the external hand controller makes it easy for setting and operation. Every press changes the set temperature by one degree Fahrenheit. The LED flashes three seconds and then stops, indicating that the temperature has been set. Okay, we did that, we figured that out. Uh, the indicator light turns red and starts heating. We're doing that. When the current water temperature is one degree Fahrenheit lower than the set temperature, it turns to a steady blue. When the water temperature reaches the set temperature, the heater rod, okay, it turns to a steady blue when the water temperature reaches the set. So, okay, got it. Um, the heater rod temperature ranges from 59 degrees Fahrenheit to a max of 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Easy operation, pressing and holding for five seconds changes the temperature display from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, so how do I know? Well, obviously I know what I'm in because that's Fahrenheit. Okay, duh. Um, wow, okay, so that was, uh, that was pretty simple. So I guess what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and just pause and let's see how long it takes uh, for this to reach 75 degrees, I don't know. We'll find out, I will time it starting right, hold on, let me get my watch going, ready, boop. Okay, let's see how long it takes. I'll check back with you. All righty, so it has been 22 minutes and as you can see, I believe you can see, uh, it now reads 75 degrees. So the current temperature is 75, it's set to 75. So the red light on the heat turned off and now the blue light at keep, I don't know if you can see that, uh, is on. So it works. So I like the idea that it took 22 minutes to heat up uh, six degrees. What that lets me know is that it's probably not gonna be too aggressive uh, so one of my concerns with getting a heater that would be too large for a small tank uh, is that just the fact that it turns on and then turns off uh, could create too great um, of a heat differential. Because as you know, even when the heater turns off, the element is still going to be hot for a while as it cools down. So it will continue to heat uh, to some degree. Um, so it would be important that you didn't have a heater that was too aggressive for a smaller tank, if that makes sense. So there you have it. The AQQA Quartz Aquarium Heater AQ015 from Amazon. Uh, I don't know, I think I paid about $35, $40 for it. I don't remember the exact price, I'm sorry. Uh, but there you have it. So far, I think it's working good. I'm pleased with it. I'll probably keep it uh, hooked up like this for the rest of the day and just make sure that nothing funky happens and that it holds the temperature. And that's about it. So if you're looking for a fairly affordable heater that's got good control ability and it's got a digital display and you can set it along with a temperature sensor, uh, this AQQA is not necessarily a bad uh, little budget option. So there you go. Thanks, guys.